Okay, so here's the logo. Um, so it's a visual design of wheel bound us in, within a wheel. Um, and again, this is our specimen. So it shows nicely uh, our actual logo next to the, the good, in this case, a mobile application. And it also shows a means of downloading. So uh, let's get into it. Let's get started. I'm going to show you guys start to finish how you guys can do it on your own uh, for your mobile application for your company. So very important. This is for from the perspective of the company. So. Uh, let's start off with uh, by going to tsdr.uspto.gov. Uh, once you get to here, you're going to want to click on file online on the left. And once you get to this form here, you'll have an option initial application forms. Just click on that. And then you're going to want to click on start your application in TS. Now, TS is the trademark electronic application system. Uh, real quick, I just want to point out, if you guys are following along at home and you've done this is the first time that you're doing this, you're not going to get to this page exactly. It's going to take you to a page where you can log in to your USPTO.gov account. So if you don't have a USPTO.gov account, just create one. It's really easy. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. So once you get to this page here, after you log in, <clears throat> clicking on that Start Your Application button is going to take you here. So this is the very start of the application. Now we're going to do the TS Plus today, and we're going to do it from the perspective of the company. So this is as if you were doing it yourself for your company. So I'm going to click No, Attorney has not found this application, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Continue. Um, now here for the owner, you're going to put in your company name and then you're going to indicate what type of company it is. Now, when you do that, it's going to prompt you to input the state where it was actually incorporated. So in this case, it was incorporated in California. So I'm going to click California. Um, and then I'm going to set the mailing address to our co-working space address. And here's the city state information. Now, one thing I want to point out on this here is that all this information is going to be public. So you want to keep that in mind. If you run your business out of your home, and if you're a, say a public figure or have a lot of followers and you don't want people to know exactly where you live, then you should be careful about the address that you put in here. Now, if you are in the situation where you're using your personal residence, um, you can uncheck this box here and actually input your address. And the trademark application system says that it keeps this basically private. So it's not viewable on the trademark application database. So again, that, this is one mechanism that you can use if you wanna put your, say your home address here and then your appeal, an appeal box up here, um, that would be one way to do it. Now for the phone number, uh, I'm going to leave that blank. Same with the fax number. But if you're a company with a public public facing side, you may actually just want to input your phone number, your fax number, and your website address. Now email is required because they need a, me a mechanism to actually communicate and contact you. So when you get an, assigned an examiner, they're going to issue an office action most likely, or not, or you just they're going to move you on to publication. But either way, they need to notify you of this. And so this is emails are important because. This is the way that the trademark office is going to communicate with you. Again, website address is optional. I'm going to go ahead and put our corporate uh, website address just for the sake of this hypothetical. Now, when I click continue, I'm going to get a warning. It's going to tell me, hey, you didn't input your phone number. But again, as I explained, that information is going to be public. Uh, I'm going to keep my phone number off the public record. Uh, and so you're going to get this warning. But again, it's not a big deal because they have a mechanism for reaching out and contacting you. So I'm not too concerned. Now we're going to actually input the mark information here. Now, yesterday we did a word mark. Today we're going to do a logo, or it's also called a design mark. So as you can see, if you select, if you scroll over, you'll see design marks. That's what we want. We're going to upload our logo, so it's an actual image. Now, one thing I want to show you guys: uh, there's actual requirements for the for the image that you submit for your logo for your design mark. So the minimum dimensions are 250 and the maximum dimensions in any one dimension is 944 pixels. So I recommend get it up to the upper limit, get it up to 944, just so it looks nice and crisp on the principal register. Now, again, I recommend submitting grayscale images or black and white images, unless, unless your color is truly distinctive of your good or product. Assuming it's not, submit black and white, that way you're not limited to color, all right? And then again, I like to submit JPEGs, PDFs are also acceptable, but, PNGs are not acceptable, so just keep that in mind. Make sure that you satisfy these requirements. So we're gonna go ahead, I already prepped the image. I showed it to you guys earlier. This is the image right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload it. And once I select it, I'll be able to actually attach it. So now you see how it, this is the file. And once I click attach, it'll actually show up here. So this is the a small thumbnail version of it. That's how we know it was actually successfully attached. And then here we're gonna input the actual literal element. So in this case, it's just the text that appears in the logo. And then we're going to indicate 
Uh, if we're not claiming color as a feature of the mark, we're going to check this box because we're not. But if we were claiming color, then you'd check this box and you'd actually input the color. I'm going to go ahead and check that box. And then I'm going to indicate what the mark consists of. So in this case, I'm just describing the actual mark itself. So here I'm just going to say the word wheel bound within a visual design of a wheel. And note, they remind you, they add this language here, the mark consists of, and they add the period at the end. So don't include that because it would just be redundant. So this looks all good. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Now we get to the part where we actually describe the goods and services. So remember, downloadable software is going to be under class nine. Uh, it's a mobile application. It's actually downloaded to my phone. So that would be uh, under class nine. So I'm going to go ahead and select add goods and services. Remember, we're doing the TS plus, which is $50 cheaper. And so because of that, we actually um, are limited in terms of the description that we can uh, input. We're going to have to actually use the canned inputs that the trademark system offers us. So I've explained this several times, but basically the, the ones that are most desirable are the options that have curly braces and bold text, because you can actually replace the bold text in the curly braces with your own language. So that's why this is most desirable. So there's one that's particularly good if we scroll down. Uh, it's kind of hidden down below, but you'll find it if you scroll down. It's, it's very simple because it doesn't have a whole lot of text. It just says downloadable applications for, and then you get to input all the text after that. So I think I flew past it. Oh, here, here it is, here it is, okay. Downloadable mobile applications for. All right, so I'm gonna check that box. And then once I click insert checked entries, uh, and again, note here, this text right here is fixed, but everything after here, I get to input myself. So really powerful, really useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert checked entries, and then I'm gonna describe what the mobile application does. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, um, downloadable mobile applications for editing uh, videos. And then I'm gonna click insert checked entries. And it's actually gonna insert this into the application. So downloadable app mobile applications for editing videos. And then I'm gonna to have to input, select what actual, what my filing basis is. So as I've explained in the past, there's two types of filing bases. Well, there's more than two, there's four, but there's generally two, at least in the US. There's section 1A and section 1B. So section 1A means that I'm already using the mark in commerce. In other words, my mobile application is already in the marketplace. It's already out there. Section 1B, on the other hand, would be proper and appropriate if I haven't yet released my good and service into the marketplace, but I want to secure the name before I invest in all the branding. So uh, we did a whole slew of episodes for how you can do this for Section 1B filings. Uh, we're going to do Section 1A filings here. So I'm going to go ahead and select Section 1A. Now, it's very important. There's two important dates that we're going to have to include along with this. Before that, though, we have to attach what's called a specimen. Now, in this case, the specimen is a web, it's a web page. But basically, the specimen needs to show actual use in commerce. So here's our logo. And it's on this web page, hypothetical web page, that shows the mobile app. And it also has a button to download the mobile app. So this is really important because this button is the actual means for the end consumer to download the application. Just keep that in mind. So this is a specimen. It's going to be a PDF file. In this case, it's just a screenshot. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it into the application by clicking attach slash remove specimen. It's going to take me to another page where I can actually select it. So I'm going to choose the file, go ahead and choose my specimen that I've pre pre prepared. And again, I prepared this beforehand. And then I'm going to click attach. Now, once I click attach, it's going to give me a status update. So here it is. It's been uploaded. So now I can return to the form. If you haven't, if you don't see that has been uploaded, then uh, don't go back to the form because obviously you won't be submitting a specimen. Here's how you know it was attached. It shows you here. It says one file attached. So that's how you know you're good to go. Now, for the description of specimen, now this is really important. So in this case, it was a web page. So if you submit specimens that are web pages, you have to include two very important items of information. One is the actual URL. And two is the date that you access the web page. So we're going to go ahead and describe it. So it's a screenshot of a web page. I'm going to give the URL. Now, again, I'm, I am making this up uh, for this particular hypothetical, but it's going to be the page where consumers are able to actually download the mobile app. Access on, I'm going to say I accessed it today, showing use of the mark, in this case, the logo, in commerce, in connection with mobile applications, downloadable mobile applications. So it includes the date and includes the URL and it describes what the specimen is. So it's a screenshot of a web page showing use of the marketing commerce in connection with downloadable mobile applications. You can say for video editing if you want to get real specific. Now, 
You have to provide two dates. The first use anywhere is a date that you first put this uh, word out in the world. So say landing pages, social media advertising, pre-release. It could be the signature line on your email. The date that you first have proof that you use this mark somewhere. The state in commerce, on the other hand, is the date where you had a, uh, your first consumer, preferably out of state, purchasing or downloading your mobile application. So use in commerce must involve at least another state. So just keep that in mind. If you want to be conservative, I recommend using the date that you had an out of state download or purchase. So if you release the app and you're based in California, the first date that someone in Oregon or Nevada or some other state or foreign country downloaded your mobile application, that's the date that you should use for the, for the date of first use in commerce. Now, once we have these two dates set in the specimen, we can go ahead and click assigned filing basis. And we know it's been assigned because when you scroll over, you're gonna see it here, assigned filing basis 1A. So that's how we know we're good to go. If you need to make edits, you can go ahead and click on that and it'll take you into the assigned filing basis section where you can make these make the edits. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And I'm going to input my correspondence information now. One thing I want to point out, of course, this docket reference information is useful, um, especially if you have a big team uh, with a lot of trademark applications. We have hundreds of trademark applications, so we really, really need this information in order for us to stay organized. Now, again, you should include anyone on your team. So I'm going to include Victoria because she's awesome and she's not going to let anything fall th or slip through the cracks. I'm adding her as a secondary email. Now, notice they're going to get cour courtesy copies of everything. So any new correspondence, office actions, publication notices, issue notices, they're also going to get a copy of that. So um, it's why it's really, really useful. I think you should add everyone that's on your team or associated with marks for your organization. So if you can enter up, up to four, just, just add a semicolon in between and you'll be good to go. Now we're going to click continue. Um, now we get to the part where we actually sign the application. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it directly. Um, before you can sign it though, they make you check four boxes. Now these boxes are really important. And if you're doing this on your own, I highly encourage you to take the time to actually read what it is that you're signing. So um, the first checkbox trips up people because it talks about intent to use applications and actual use applications. And this confuses people, but there's an or here, okay? So the or indicates that you could be under section 1A or under section 1B. So in this case, we're filing under section 1A. Therefore, this text right here is what applies to us. So this text here is sort of fleshed out down below. The first uh, checkbox indicates our filing basis. The second checkbox indicates that we are agreeing that based on uh, best to our knowledge, we have a right to actually use this mark in commerce, meaning that there isn't some other person or entity that is using a similar mark for the same class of goods or services. So this is important. It's important that we mark this checkbox. Uh, and then the third checkbox is saying that there's factual support for the statements that we make in this application. And the fourth checkbox states that we're, we know that we're signing under penalty of perjury, meaning any false statements can subject us to fine or imprisonment. So once we check review and check these four boxes, and again, highly, highly encourage you to read these carefully if you're doing this on your own, especially if it's your first time, you wanna make sure that you guys actually understand what you're signing and what you are attesting to when you file a trademark application. Now, to do the signature, all you do is you put your name within slashes, super simple, just forward slash your name, and then close it with the forward slash. And then the date sign, it automatically populates it for you. And then I like to put last name, comma, first name, followed by the initial, and then your position. So if you're CEO, president, CEO, president, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do CEO today. Um, you can spell it out if you, if you want. And then phone number is optional. I'm gonna go ahead and not include my phone number. So I'm gonna go ahead and click validate. And it's gonna give me a warning. Hey, you didn't put your phone number. Again, it's okay. I don't need my phone number. They have a way of contacting me. They have my email address. So once I click continue, it takes me to the very last page where I can actually review the application before submission. So when I get to here, I'm gonna to wanna to actually confirm that the entire application is correct. Now, one of the big reasons for that is because there are no refunds. So if it turns out that I submitted the wrong mark, um, like if there was another logo that we actually wanted to submit, you'd have to submit a whole new application and pay a whole new set of filing fees. So once we review the application, we make sure that our entire uh, application is correct, we like our description of goods, that we can go back and actually hit submit. Now, one thing I'll remind you guys of, if there's for some reason a typo in any of this part of this application, they make it really easy to go back and modify and edit it. All you have to do is go scroll to the bottom and click go back to modify. Now, you can literally step through backwards 
every part of this application and it's like a session. So when you go forwards and backwards, your information is stored and saved. So you can go ahead and make changes um, knowing that when you go forward, it's gonna retain and store all your information. So you don't have to worry about having to re-input information. So again, it's a good tool. Just keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I wanna point out, um, if you guys are unsure about submitting today, you can just click save form. It'll download what's called a .obj file. You can then take that .obj file and then upload it uh, tomorrow, for example, or some, some future date, and it'll automatically populate the session. So this is good if I wanna talk to Victoria about it or some other team member before I go ahead and submit. So this is a good good technique. This allows me to actually um, finalize or get some feedback and then update the application and then submit, but without having to input every bit of information from start to finish. So good way to save time. Now, before we can submit, I just wanna point out two quick things. Double check the mark, click the mark button, make sure this is actually how it's gonna show up on the register if it's registered. So make sure it's correct. And then look at the specimen, make sure that the specimen description is correct. Make sure you have these two very important bits of information. One is the URL and two is the date that you accessed it. This is a new rule. If you don't include it, you're gonna get your specimen refused. It's gonna be rejected, you have to resubmit, it's kind of a pain. So make sure you have these two dates that are required as of about February of this year. A specimen looks good, mark looks good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I feel pretty confident about this application. So before I can submit though, it, it makes me check three boxes, sorry, uh, attest to three more last things. I just wanna make sure that you understand these three very important bits. The first bit is that, there are no refunds. So as I explained before, you wanna make sure that the mark that you submit is actually correct because you cannot edit the mark after submission, okay? You can edit a lot of other things in the application, but fundamentally the actual mark that you submit for registration, you cannot change. So for example, I think I've said this multiple times, but let's say like the wheel bound, there should have been a space in between, that's a problem. You have to submit a whole new trademark application. So make sure that the mark is actually the mark that you're using in commerce because you cannot change the mark after submission. Two is that you have no right to confidentiality. They put it nice and bold. They make it very clear. So this is important because, it, like I said before, if you have if you have a home address and you don't want people knowing about your home address, then you want to take that into consideration. You possibly want to use the domicile address checkbox so they keep that confidential, but then only put out your appeal box to the world. So keep that in mind. And then, unfortunately, because all the information is public. There are services out there that actually mine the trademark application system to identify uh, new applicants and then they send them junk mail. So if you click this link here, you can read all about misleading notices. And by the way, you're most, more than likely gonna get a misleading notice from at least one of these companies. Um, you can disregard it. But again, if you're unsure, just come to this page here. You can just Google misleading notices, USPTO. Um, you can probably, you'll probably actually be able to find your exact notice obviously with your information, but the same template. So um, the big tell here to keep in mind is that you're never gonna have to pay trademark fees to a third party, of course, unless you hire them, right? But you never have to pay fees to a third party. It's always paid directly to the trademark office. So keep that in mind. And again, if you're unsure, just, just Google, go to this site. You can look up who sent you the letter and more than likely you're gonna see it's from one of these entities. Um, and just to remind everybody, the trademark office is in Alexandria, Virginia. And what you'll notice is that there aren't, there's maybe two. So here, there are two that I can see, at least on this page, that are actually from Alexandria. A lot of these are from New York, Florida, uh, Washington, not, not from the trademark office. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the application. Application looks good, I checked this box. So now all I have to do is click pay submit. Now, when I, when I click pay submit, it's gonna take me to a payment page. Now, we're gonna see, we're gonna pay the 225 at this stage. Again, it's 225 per class. And so one thing I wanna point out is that um, once I fill out this payment form and click submit, it's actually gonna take me to a place where I can actually download the application that I submitted. That's called the filing receipt. So here we go, 225, we're gonna put our credit card information here and then click pay submit. So post submission, you're gonna get what's called the filing receipt. The filing receipt has a serial number. The serial number is very important because you can use it to track the status of your application throughout both when it's being going through the trademark office and then even post registration. So again, serial number, very, very useful. You'll be able to track the status of your application at any time. Now, if you forgot for some reason to download the actual filing receipt on the next page post, post payment, it's okay because again, you're gonna get an email confirming receipt of payment and that email is effectively your filing receipt. It's gonna have your filing date and the application is filed. And by the way, your teammates are also gonna get a copy of that. 
just keep that in mind. It's a good way to uh, keep track of everything. You're going to get emails, so you'll always have a record of the trademark application is filed. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.